Welcome to Ocean County Focus. I'm Donna Flynn, your host. Joining me today is the director of the Ocean County Board of Commissioners, Barbara Jo Cray, and the director of the Ocean County Office of Senior Services. And we're gonna be talking about programs and services that affect the 200,000 seniors that live in Ocean County. Barbara Jo, thank you so much for being here today. Maria, thank, thank you also. Um, you know, very often, Seniors, you know, that it's a it's a big topic for Ocean County because it's a third of your population. Yeah. People want to move to Ocean County, especially to retire. What attracts them here? I think the most important thing is that it's uh, not only it's a, it's affordable. I think that uh, when we were younger and growing up, we all wanted to come to the Jersey Shore. Right. And now that we can, uh, as we are now aged and growing up, we want to come because it is affordable and, and something that we would really enjoy. And, and oftentimes, if we have families here, we want to come and join them with mm -hmm. also. Does Ocean County offer an active lifestyle? Oh, absolutely, without, without any question. Mm -hmm. There's an awful lot going on. And uh, through Maria's programs, you'll find, as we continue our conversation, you're gonna see that there's a tremendous amount of activity going on. Right, and what about the amenities of Ocean County? I mean, it's more than just the, the shore and, and the bay, you have Parks, parks and 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 so many other things talk a little bit about that they have we have the most beautiful parks we have a lot of activities that go on especially for the senior population mm -hmm. there's things that they can do they can go to within within their own communities there's several senior oh, not several there's quite a few senior communities that offer activities within their own environment and not only that there's the uh, things that are within their own special where they can drive to mm -hmm. and make it easy for them to enjoy. Right. Maria, um, as director of the Office of Senior Services, while Ocean County does offer that affordable, active lifestyle, if you will, seniors, it, I, I want to put this the right way, it's, it's, the aging process is a little, you have younger seniors mm -hmm. and then you have 100 plus. Mm -hmm. So seniors come into a lot of challenges after a while. What are the greatest challenges that you see through your office? The greatest challenges I think that they're having right now, um, uh, particularly because of the cost of living increase, um, is the food insecurity, mm -hmm. um, housing insecurity, transportation has always been a struggle here. Um, and so We've been, home delivered meals is one of the programs that they access often. Mm -hmm. uh, we have great transportation programs, but as far as challenges, I think right now after the pandemic, the challenge has been trying to make that social security check keep up with the cost of living right. so that they can meet their basic needs. Mm -hmm. um, and so that, that's been the biggest challenge. Right, what's the, what's the, the, the biggest growth area of your seniors? Is it the people that are 80, the people that are 100, the people that are 65? The fastest and largest growing population is the 85 plus. Mm -hmm. We are seeing life expectancies well beyond what we used to. Mm -hmm. uh, I celebrated a 108 year old's birthday. Wow. Um, I know of a 110 year old. Um, we had uh, one of our home delivered meal participants testify at the state public hearing about what our programs, uh, how our programs allowed her mm -hmm. to age healthy and at home. And so that's the, the largest growing population. And part of it is because we offer such a um, comprehensive network of services mm -hmm. to help them age, but that, that is the largest growing population. And Commissioner, um, very often, um, I believe you, you've actually called the Office of Senior Services really the hub of the senior programs in Ocean County. What does that mean exactly? It's, it's a place where people can go. It's a, it's a place where people, there are services available to the seniors. Not only, as Maria pointed out, the home delivered meals, uh, things that we have a very large senior population and where there, there's so many things that the seniors need. And I also, I wanna point out, it's not only for the seniors themselves, mm -hmm. but for those who care for them. Right. And so oftentimes you'll find the younger people, uh, the, the children of the seniors, looking to provide for their families. And they can go there to get that information mm -hmm. as to how they're gonna be able to provide for the seniors, mm -hmm. how to provide for their families, how to provide for their moms and dads. Right, right. And that's the hub of where they would go right. because those programs are available and Maria's staff and her, she's marvelous. 
they can be able to be able to do that and give those answers quite easily. Mm -hmm. And Maria, you know, clear, you have you have a certain number of people that work in your office and stuff. And when you have two hundred thousand people, and not all two hundred thousand people are accessing the services, but mm -hmm. how how does the network work for you? What what's you know, what is this, what, what's all in the box right. of senior services, if you will? So we, uh, our office, our department serves primarily as the focal point. Mm -hmm. So you're going to call us in your, with any question. It could be anything from property tax relief to I, how do I get a, an appointment at motor vehicle to right. I need a meal. Um, so it starts with us, but we don't provide all of the services. What we do is we fund a network of I believe we have about 26 providers now mm -hmm. offering um, over over 50 programs, right. and so that network is what um, what provides more of a holistic approach of of helping our seniors. We we have everything from meals, transportation, caregiver support programs. It starts by accessing it by calling us, and we will then refer you out seamlessly. Okay which mm -hmm. is important because mm -hmm. you don't want seniors making a variety of phone calls sure, when they sure. need just to get an answer to one thing. So you become almost like a navigator for them, if you will. Exactly, exactly. Yeah, and it's for all the programs that are, that are available. Mm -hmm. And the the other thing that, I, that, that Ocean County, the departments of Ocean County do very well is they interact well. So when we talk about transportation, there's a transportation department with Ocean Ride, and um, mm -hmm. you know Maria is in the same building as Human Services That's and exactly right. Consumer Affairs. Why is that important to make sure everybody's working together? Because the needs are so varied. <clears throat> Excuse me. The needs are so varied, uh, as Maria pointed out. Someone may need something more than just a delivered meal. They may need transportation to a doctor, a transportation to a physician. Mm -hmm. They meet. They meet. They may need home health care, which would come under the office of senior, Sir, uh, uh, the office of human services. So there's a a networking and interaction among all the different county offices, and she, her office would provide that communication, and to help that one person in need, mm -hmm. and the various departments that they would need to have to answer their questions. And what about the funding for these <coughs> programs? Where does that come from? She would be better off for answering okay. that than I would. <laughs> Primarily for my department, it's the Older Americans Act. We're mm -hmm. very fortunate that Congress passed this act oh, in the late 60s, early 70s, and it actually came with funding. Mm -hmm. Sometimes they pass laws, but there's no funding right, behind right. them. And the purpose of the act was recognizing that people are going to be aging and that they're going to need supports to be able to stay in their homes. Mm -hmm. Um, and so that is, we, we, it's a federal act, it provides funding, it comes through the state, but it's never, ever, ever enough. Mm -hmm. And I've been very fortunate when there's a shortfall to turn to my board of chosen commissioners and ask them to make up that shortfall. Right. So it is really a combination of federal, state, and a large part of, of local dollars to mm -hmm. make this happen. Mm -hmm. And we're actually gonna take a quick break. Sure. And we're gonna be back at Ocean County Focus. We'll be right back. Ocean County, experience the good life. The Ocean County Board of Commissioners working to make Ocean County a better place to call home and a special place to visit. Welcome back to Ocean County Focus. Joining me today is the director of the Ocean County Board of Commissioners, Barbara Jo Cray. Joining her is the director of the Ocean County Office of Senior Services, Maria LaFace, and we're talking about programs and services for seniors living in Ocean County. Barbara Joe, when we when we went to break, we were talking about you know just the number of people that are number of seniors that move to Ocean County and why they're here, and just to bring you back a little bit earlier this year, the Board of Commissioners approved. I, I'm I'm guessing there was about maybe 50 contracts for over 25, 26 providers that that provide um, the services, you know, a lot of the services to seniors in Ocean County, and I wanted to talk to you about the importance of doing that. And it's something that the board does traditionally. Why is that so important to keep that up? When you think about the daily activities or, or the need of a person in their own home, 
living independently, we think about what their requirements are. And in order to get from one day to the next, there are certain things that have to be done, such as nutrition, mm -hmm. such as perhaps transportation to a doctor, uh, whatever. And they're the kind of contracts and uh, services that the county will provide. Right. One of the key contracts or key programs um, for senior services has been the home delivered meals program and the nutrition sites, which luckily or nicely they're, they're up and running again, they're being very active again. That was, that had changed as a result of COVID, yeah. but now that's all starting to come back. What is the importance of, um, of a home delivered meal? I think besides the nutritional uh, factor, I think one of the most important things that I can recall uh, from years back is making sure that the person that delivers the meal also has contact with the person in the home. Mm -hmm. And if by some chance, they, they, well, they physically see the person. Right. And if they don't see the person, then they know that there's perhaps a problem. Mm -hmm. And that, had ha that has happened several times, if I'm not mm -hmm. mistaken. Yes, and then immediately some type of uh, emergency uh, contact is made. Mm -hmm. So it is more than just the meal being delivered, it's the actual physical contact right. and some type of communication with someone in a home mm -hmm. that's by themselves. Mm -hmm. And of course, the nutritional side of that, right. where a meal is being delivered. But how important, I mean, and, and I wonder how many people realize that a program that sounds so simple as a delivered meal actually becomes a lifeline it is. for how many, you know, for the number of seniors it that is. get it. I mean, it's a very big program in Ocean County and a it lot is. of people do rely on it. Yes. And Maria, when, when we talk about the, the home delivered meals program too, um, how many people are actually receiving meals at this point? At this point, through our uh, regular home delivered meals program, it's probably about 1,100 meals a day. We mm -hmm. also have the kosher meal program, and there's another 600, uh, 60 meals a day. So we're, we can range anywhere between 1,100 to 1,500, right. depending on when, the, when COVID hit and there was a ton of, uh, of um, seniors uh, homebound, mm -hmm. that expanded exponentially. But right. normally it's anywhere between 1,100 and 1,500 meals a day. And the county actually provides the facility for these meals to be prepared. Is that correct? It's a what are the benefits of doing something like that? It's a massive production. Sure. Since starting here, I've learned a lot about this production and we do, we have a kitchen mm -hmm. um, and it has, it produces these 1100 to 1500 meals a day. Right. And that needs to get out in a certain time frame, right. all within a window. The biggest struggle, um, I think, is the size of this county. Right. Um, well, of course, yes. You've got a kitchen uh, in Manahawkin that needs to cover, uh, what are we, um, 630 yep. yeah, square, uh, square miles. So that's the production. It's massive. It requires uh, rerouting. Every time you add a new person to a route, mm -hmm. I had to learn that that's not an easy task. Sure. You've Absolutely. got to make sure that you can squeeze one more drop off in, but still not reduce the quality of any of those services. Right. Um, and so it is a massive production. One of the programs I'm so very proud of and one that the commissioners have always supported. Mm -hmm. And whenever I've said, you know, that we may be reaching a, a wait list, mm -hmm. um, the commissioners have graciously made sure that we uh, were able to meet those needs. It is getting much more difficult though, sure. as people age, and we talk about a hundred year old at home, um, there's more and more people living uh, to 100, right. and they can't get, many of them can't get out. They're sure. not as mobile. Sure. So we're just gonna see this increase. Right, right. Now, how does someone sign up for, for the Home Delivered Meals Program? What do I they need to do? I always say call my office, okay. because the easiest way to get the information is to mm -hmm. call our office, 732-929-2091. Right. Mm -hmm. You can also go on the web, and then we will direct um, them to Community Services Inc. Mm -hmm. or to Lakewood uh, Community Service Corporation, depending on where they are and what right. the need is. It also helps us to identify other needs while we're on the phone. Mm -hmm. Rather than making a direct referral for a meal, we find out other sure. things. You may need prescription assistance. You may need transportation. Mm -hmm. So when we talk about being the hub, even though we're not offering that service and you can go directly to a agency, 
by coming through us, we're going to identify any other needs mm -hmm. that we can meet through our services. Right, and that's really important too. Yeah. And the, the other thing too is, how do you determine the needs so that you, when you do go out with these, for these contracts or when you do provide services mm -hmm. from your office, how do you, how, where does that come from? I mean, is there a, a plan on it? Does the public have an opportunity to, to participate in that? It comes from our seniors because mm -hmm. nobody knows what they need better than them. Right. And so we hold a public hearing every year um, and we are very fortunate. Our providers will, they'll drive in seniors to come and, and they really? will tell us. Mm -hmm. We ask them what the priority needs are. What is it if, if you know, what's your wish list? Uh, we know we can't meet every need. Mm -hmm. um, and so through that, through surveys, because we want to be able to capture the homebound clients. What are right. their needs? So our home, uh, our home delivered meal provider will do hand uh, written surveys with them, mm -hmm. and then just through our stakeholders, other other agencies, what are they hearing? And so, but primarily from the seniors themselves. Right. And so that's where it starts. Right. And Commissioner, you know, you you just recently took over as liaison to senior services. Have you had the opportunity to meet with any of the providers or or any of the seniors? And what are they saying to you? I think uh, we had a meeting not too long ago with the providers, and I think that I was so impressed with what they're doing. Mm -hmm. And as I said to them, I thank them for what they were doing. And when you lit, when you hear the programs that they, they're out on the street, they're sure. out talking to the different people. Mm -hmm. And I think one of the most important things that they provide in some cases are the congregate meals, mm -hmm. because not only do the people need food, sometimes they need socialization. Sure, sure. And so some of the, that's one of the things they do. Mm -hmm. But the communication among the people and the, with Maria's office has been remarkable. Mm -hmm. And uh, they're very happy with what they're doing because we're able to help them and they're able to help us. Right, which is wonderful. And we're actually gonna take a quick break. We're gonna be right back here on Ocean County Focus. Ocean County, experience the good life. The Ocean County Board of Commissioners, working to make Ocean County a better place to call home and a special place to visit. And welcome back to Ocean County Focus. Today we're talking about programs and services that affect seniors living in Ocean County. Commissioner, when we went to break, we were talking about one of the key programs um, that, that you know, affects a lot of the seniors that live in Ocean County, and that's the Home Delivered Meals programs. An important aspect, though, of these services is outreaching people. Why is that so important? I think one of the most important things of the outreach is to make sure that the seniors are aware of what is available to them. Oftentimes, they'll sit back, and if they don't know, mm -hmm. they're not going to take advantage of it. So I think it's incumbent upon us to make sure that they know that we do everything we can to put that information out there so that they can take advantage of it and maintain a quality of life. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think that's, like I said before, it's not only important to the senior, but important to the family members who are caring for them. Maria, how do you reach out to our seniors? Because I, I, I don't, it seems to me that seniors, especially when you're looking at people in their 80s, they're, they have the type of personality where they're like, I don't want to bother anybody. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, I'll, I'll, you know, I'm just, this will be, I, I don't want to. So how do we break that? How do we change that? You're right. That generation does not like to ask for assistance. Um, and so what we've been doing is making, we're very fortunate in Ocean because we know where they are. We have 91 right. adult communities. Mm -hmm. The key I found was making relationships with the leadership of those communities right. so that we could then night bring our services into their comfort zone mm -hmm. and just talk about it people don't like to uh, seniors don't like to come to an office and air their all sure. of their issues well sure but if you're on site and you're talking to their friend and they found out their friend just got utility assistance and oh maybe i can do that mm -hmm. and so you just bring it to them and you make it more of um it's not it's it's their taxpayer dollars working to serve them now sure. because that that baby boomer and the silent generation do not like 
to ask for help. Right, and where can they go? For, I mean, we, we know that they could call your office, but I also know that there's locations that they can, that they can go to throughout Ocean County right. because the county has really, again, we were talking about the size of the county and, and you can't just have stuff in Tom's River now. So where are, your, where are the outreach offices that they can go to? Now we have one at the mall, which mm -hmm. is very busy. Seniors like to walk the mall and they right. can stop in and yep. get some of their um, work done or, or, or applications filled out. It's, it's working very well. Mm -hmm. We also recently expanded into Manahawkin um, because we see a growth in adult communities in the southern part of the county and a growth in the demand for services there and so we just opened up a satellite office there and mm -hmm. it's fully staffed and we're starting to see an increase in foot traffic. Oh that's great. Uh, and then the other one is our main office on Hooper Avenue mm -hmm. um, and it is a, a very busy hub as well. The one that I'm looking forward to is our mobile assistance right. unit that will be coming. We ordered it um, a while back. I think we talked about it a couple of episodes ago, and we are finally hearing that it will be delivered. And mm -hmm. once that is delivered, it will be a fully equipped office that we can then travel mm -hmm. to anywhere. Um, where, wherever the seniors are, we can bring the office and the assistance, mm -hmm. making it easier for them to access. Now for these outreach posts, if you will, do I need an appointment to get there? Do I, can I just stroll in and get information? Um, so what's, what's the in. best way to do it? Okay. You can walk in or you can call and make an appointment. And now we also have appointments online. Okay. Um, and you can pick the site that you'd like to meet with a person. Oh, that's uh, great. And, and enter an appointment. So so um, we are changing as the world changes, sure, sure. Uh, we're changing. Mm -hmm. And so younger seniors are more inclined to just go right. online and schedule that Medicare appointment, mm -hmm. while other seniors who are w will be walking around the mall and, and just walk in and say, hey, maybe you can help me with this. Right. Um, so that's that's primarily how you Yeah, the county connection really is one of the, one of the great things from the Board of Commissioners, mm. really. Um, and let's talk a little bit about that, too. How has that helped with the outreach of, of services? Oh, it is a one-stop shop. Uh, just the other day, we cut the ribbon as we had expanded the services that are provided there. But everything from getting a passport uh, to the senior services, there's a tremendous amount of opportunity there for people who need. And one of the things I want to point out is, uh, in terms of senior services, that oftentimes people, and I want to reiterate what Maria said, they're reluctant to go anywhere, mm -hmm. but if you happen to be walking through the mall and you happen to be at the Tom's River Mall and you happen to look over and maybe you'll just stop in and ask a question and mm -hmm. get that question answered mm -hmm. and you feel less intimidated. Sure, And sure. I think it's a wonderful thing. And like I said, it could be a younger person asking on behalf of their family. Mm -hmm. And I think it really, the County Connection has really been a big plus right. for a number of services for the county. Mm -hmm. And what's the importance of taking care of the caregivers? I'm smiling because <laughs> somewhere in life, I think we've all been one. Um, my, my line is always the caregivers need care. Mm -hmm. uh, the the uh, pressure, the sometimes you don't have all the answers but you want the best for your family. Sure. And so what we need to do is to be able to provide them, the caregivers, with the money, as many of the answers as we possibly can. Mm -hmm. And if we can make the family feel better, and I mean the elderly person or the, the parent feel better, you're absolutely going to make the caregiver feel sure. better. Sure, sure. And be able to, most often, the younger person is working. Mm -hmm. How are they going to take care of the family? Mm -hmm. What are they going to do? Mm -hmm. So we've all been there. Right. Mm -hmm. What specifically do we provide to the caregiver? Oh, wow. We, have, we provide an array now. We have exhausted caregivers. And interestingly, caregivers are oftentimes seniors as well. Sure. They're 60 sure. or fast right. approaching 60. Right. So, uh, but specifically right. for caregiving, we have uh, caregiver support groups. Mm -hmm. We have something called uh, respite. So if you are going to a wedding <clears throat> or you just need a break, right. um, we can have someone go to the home to take care of uh, your mother or father, um, or we could put them somewhere for a night or a weekend where they'll get care right. in a facility, just something to give them a break. Other programs are if a caregiver is going to be taking on mom and they need a ramp on their home, Mm -hmm. because mom can't get in and out, right, right. we'll provide that for mm -hmm. the caregiver, which surprises them because mm -hmm. they don't think any services are available right. for them. 
uh, PERS buttons have become uh, medical alert buttons. Right. Have become so important for caregivers who have to be at work and, mm -hmm. but have a sense of relief knowing that if some mom falls or dad falls, mm -hmm. somebody will know, I'll know, and somebody else will know. Right. And so it's everything from support to home modifications to medical alert buttons, anything that will relieve their stress um, and, and, and some of the duties that they, uh, they sure. have to take on so that sure. they can take care of their families or go to work. Mm -hmm. Now, can, they, can, can folks <clears throat> access that information from your website also? Yes. That's all, that's, so that's all available through yes. that. You can now with, um, what is it, Q, QR codes and QR things codes, like yes, that, yes. Uh, <laughs> uh, you can access everything right. now on, online. And we now put our resource directory up there okay. and we have a caregiver resource directory. So mm -hmm. yes, I, I would encourage anybody who does use the, the computer to access it. Mm -hmm. um, and we're, we got about a minute left, so there's one new initiative that the county's been, um, you know, kind of getting involved in now, and that's with the AARP. And this will help in networking for the county, and why is that so important, Commissioner? I think when looking to different areas to see what has worked, what has not worked, and this way Maria's department can actually examine what has worked in different areas and focus her staff and her finances and her resources on what has worked in other areas. Mm -hmm. And I, am I saying that correctly? That's absolutely correct. We can learn from our colleagues around the country who have tried certain uh, projects and, and what worked and what didn't and how we tweak them. It also gives us the ability to take a bird's eye view as a county about what are the, for all departments, our uh, planning, parks, business and tourism, when they are putting together their plans or their strategic planning, right. are they considering aging in that process? We all know now that seniors are living longer. We have a, a growing senior population. So when we're designing anything in the county, mm -hmm. um, we need to be thinking about how are uh, older adults going to be able to enjoy this right. or use this or right. get there? We mm -hmm. have to do that. And so the going through the AARP process of age-friendly will give us access to all kinds of materials that, that it, others have uh, used and, and samples, but it will also give us an opportunity to take a step back and look at aging from an entire county perspective right. as opposed right. to just a senior services perspective. Mm -hmm. And that's a really great way, what a great approach, yeah. especially with such a large population. And I'm, I'm saying, I, I would guess that a lot of the departments look at that already. I mean, mm -hmm. beyond senior services, when you're looking mm -hmm. at parks programs or, or, you know, our transportation program and, and the like. So, I, you know, but what a, what a great concept, again, to just look at it as a, almost oh, a boy. holistic approach or a whole approach. Mm -hmm. Um, we are actually wrapping up this show right now, mm -hmm. so I just wanted to give you a few, just a, a, like a minute now to to, to, to to address the seniors in Ocean County. What, what are your thoughts for them? What do you want to say to them directly? I would like to let them know that the county is here all, every day, and Maria's office is here. Our mission is to allow people to live a life that's enjoyable, uh, healthy, to the best of their ability, and to really enjoy the time that they have. And to have a lot of good memories, a lot of good times, and to really be happy with what they are and have everything. And I want to thank you for the mm -hmm. work that you do. Thank you. And thank you for the information that you're putting out to them. Well, we appreciate, I certainly appreciate both of you being here today. Thank you. And I want to thank you for joining us here on Ocean County Focus. Have a great day. Ocean County. Experience the good life. The Ocean County Board of Commissioners, working to make Ocean County a better place to call home, and a special place to visit.